Hi, today we will see how to add Hiken Ashi candles in Python and try two related strategies. So the Hiken Ashi smooth candles are calculated from normal candlesticks that we usually use for trading. Each Hiken candle is obtained using the following formulas. The uh, Hiken closing price is obtained by averaging the open price of the current candle, the high, the low and the closing price and the Hiken open price is obtained from the closing of the Hiken value that we just calculated using the Hiken open of the previous Hiken Ashi candle and the Hiken close of the previous Hiken Ashi candle divided by two. So we are averaging the open and the close price of the previous candle. The high value is the maximum among the high of the normal candlestick, the open of the Hiken candle or the closing value of the Hiken candle. So we're taking the maximum value among these three values and the minimum or the lowest value of the hiking candle is the minimum among the lowest price of the current candle, the normal candlestick, the um, open price of the hiken, the current hiken ash candle, or the closing price of the current hiken ash candle, depending on which direction we have. Is it a red candle or a green candle? So in brief, except for the high and low values, the candle is made of averaged values, which gives the Hiken chart its smooth look that some traders might find better or less noisy than normal candles. Now the purpose of this video is not to present a winning Hiken system, but to show you how to build these candles in Python and how to build an algorithmic strategy and backtest these for the results. Now the first strategy I found about online uses two moving averages. One is fast, the other one is slow to determine the trend. So if the fast moving average is above the slow moving average, we consider we have an uptrend and therefore we are looking for a buying position. And in the opposite case, if the fast moving average, the red curve here is below the slow moving average, which is the blue one, then we consider we are in a downtrend and therefore we are looking for selling positions. And as for any strategy, we need the trigger or an entry position. So this strategy triggers a trade signal if we are in a clear trend and the Hiken candle crosses the fast moving average in the trend direction. So for example, in this case, we have a downtrend here. The fast moving average is below the blue curve, which is the slow moving average. And we have one Hiken candle here that is crossing from above to below the fast moving average. And therefore, this is a trigger at the closing price. We have selling position or a short position at this point here. And of course, we can think the same if we are in the opposite direction. We have an uptrend. We are looking for a green candle going from below, closing above the fast moving average to trigger a buying position. The second variation of this strategy is obtained by adding one more condition where we look for a doji candle followed by a short tail candle. For example, here we have a doji candle, which is followed by a short wick or short tail candle right here in the direction of the trend, meaning we have a downtrend and the second bar, meaning the short wick candle is opening above the fast moving average and closing below. So in this case, we can trigger our short position or our selling position. The reason we are looking for no wick or no uh, tail candles is because it's an indicator that we have a um, strong down or strong up momentum, depending on which trend we are looking for. Of course, any of these strategies comes with its challenges, which time frame is best for these candles, what's the best stop loss position and exit strategies to be used in this case. So now let's see how to write all of these details in Python and try to backtest these two strategies. This is our Jupyter Notebook file and we are importing the uh, libraries that we're going to use, and downloading the data, uh, stock data of the Russell 1000 for 10 years since 2012 up to 2022, dropping the uh, volume column because we're not going to use it for this strategy. We don't need it. And I'm printing the first 10 lines, the head of our data frame, to make sure that all the data is loaded properly. So this is how it looks like. We have the date of the price. This is the daily time frame. We have the open, high, low and closing and the adjusted closing price. Then I'm removing the um, days where we had the open price equal to the closing price. So these are like smashed candles. In other words, we didn't have any movements during these days or the candles didn't show any movements because the market was closed. 
we are resetting the index as well because once we filter our data, we delete some of the rows, we have to reset the index for later on. So notice now that my index is simply an integer, 0, 1, 2, and so on, and the date is back to a column. And this is the part where all the magic happens. We are going to compute the hike and closing price column, which is uh, equal to the data open plus the data close plus the data high and the low price divided by four. Remember the closing price is the average of the current normal candlestick. So we're taking all four values, open, close, high and low. We're summing up all these values and dividing by four. This is how we obtain the, uh, the closing price. Now the opening price is slightly trickier because it's obtained from the previous Heiken Ashi candle, but because we don't have a Heiken candle yet for the starting of the data frame, I'm going to put it equal to data open, and this is only going to be valid, meaning the current open of the Heiken candle will be equal to the opening price of the normal candle, just for the first value. And once this is done, we can uh, adjust a for loop for i in range from one and not from zero because we already have our first open and close price. So from one up to length of data, uh, so the whole data frame, the data hiken open price of the row i is equal to data hiken open i minus one. So the opening price of the previous hiken candle plus the data high can close of i minus one, so the closing price of the previous high can candle divided by two. This is how we obtain the opening prices of the high can candles. Now for the high and low prices, it's kind of simpler or easier. It's equal to whatever is the maximum value between the high of the normal candlestick, the open of the high can candle, or the closing price of the high and candle. So this is going to be our high and high, and the high and low is the minimum between those three values, the lower value of the normal candlestick and the opening price of the current high and the closing price of the current high can. So all of this is going to compute the high and candles, and we're going to add the related data, meaning the high and open, high and close, high and high, and high and low into our data frame as columns. And this is how our data frame is going to look like. We have the date, we have the open, high, low, close, and the adjusted close. Remember, these were already there in our data frame, so these are related to the normal candlesticks. And if we move to the right, we have the high can close, the high can open, high can high, and high can low. Then we can add whatever indicators using the uh, Pandas technical analysis uh, package. So I'm adding two moving averages for this part, so the EMA 20 and the EMA 50 and the RSI in case someone wants to use it. So the length equal 12 here. The best way to verify that everything is working well or as intended is to make a plot. We can plot the data and this is what we obtain. These are the Heiken candles. As you can see, we have the two moving averages as well. And notice that each candle is starting from the middle of the previous candle. So the opening price of this candle right here is just in the middle of the body of the previous candle and so on. All the candles are the same. The reason is that, remember, the opening price of the high can candles is obtained by averaging the, um, this is the opening price, it's obtained by averaging the open price and the closing price of the previous candle of I minus one. And this is why, just to make sure all is properly and we don't have any hidden bugs in our program, this is why our candles should be opening at the middle of the previous candle. So this is correct. Notice as well that for the high end candles, when we have a strong upward movement, the candles, they don't have any lower wicks or lower tails. And in a strong downward momentum, we don't have any higher wick for the candles and the candles are mainly red. Now the strategy looks working fine. I mean, here we have a downtrend as per the um, fast and slow moving averages. And we have one high end candle that is opening above the fast moving average, closing below the moving average. And so we have a selling signal. And if we would sell right here, we can see that we have a nice downtrend. So this is a very profitable uh, trade. This one here as well, we are still in a downtrend. We have a uh, candle, a high end candle crossing the fast moving average from up to bottom. And then we have a downtrend as well. So we have two nice trades on this chart. But 
This is how it looks like from this sample. Let's check it out, backtest everything, and see how profitable this can be. Now we can compute our trading signal. So I'm calling a function total signal that takes the data frame, also a, a list called order signal of the same size or length of the data frame. For the moment, our signals are equal to zero. They are going to be equal to two when we have a buying, tra uh, buying signal and equal to one when we have a selling signal. So for each row, for each day, I'm going to check if the uh, fast moving average, the MA20 of the current row is above the EMA50 of the current row. So in which case we are in an uptrend. And at the same time, we have a high can open of the current candle below of the uh, fast moving average, which is the EMA20. And at the same time, the closing price of the same high can candle is above the um, fast moving average, the MA20, in which case we have an uptrend and a candle, a high can candle crossing the fast moving average from bottom to top. And this is how we are going to have um, order signal equal to two. In the opposite direction, when we have a downtrend moving averages and a red candle crossing from uh, top to bottom, in which case we will be having uh, order signal equal to one. And we are adding those order signals into our data frame as a new column called order signal. So we're running this cell and this is where our signals are going to be computed and we are resetting and dropping the non-valid or empty rows from our data frame before the backtesting phase. Now before backtesting, actually, I like to visualize things. It's much easier to assess the situation. So we're adding points using this function above and below the candles whenever we have a buying or selling positions. So I'm running this to declare these new points in a new column in our data frame. And we are plotting the Heiken candles along with moving averages and the signals uh, points that are going to be plotted on the chart. So we can see that we have a purple point here and another one here. I'm going to add the size just to make it slightly more visible. So we have an uptrend moving average. The red one is above the uh, slow one, the blue one. So we have an uptrend. And at the same time, look at this candle. It's crossing from below the fast moving average to above the fast moving average. And this is where we have a um, buying signal, hence the uh, purple point, which is here. And here as well, we have a buying signal. So these signals look fine. One of the pitfalls of using Heiken Ashi candles is that when you have the signal, you shouldn't be uh, trading or backtesting on the Heiken Ashi chart because these are not the real values of the market. The real values of the market are the real chart, the real candlesticks, which are here. So in other words, um, taking the signal from the chart of the Heiken Ashi candles, but then I'm using the trading on the normal candles. And this is a mistake I have seen in so many YouTube videos. I have seen it also in blogs and so on, because this is very tricky. I mean, this looks very nice, but this is not the reality. Remember that these were obtained by averaging different values from the normal candlesticks. The real values are the um, real candlesticks or the normal candlesticks. So in order to check where the signals were triggered for real, I'm going to add this size as well. So we have signals here, which is not bad. It's good. It's a buying signal probably. So we have a small uptrend after the signal. We have another one right here, so as you can see, but these signals are coming from using the um, Heiken Ashi uh, chart. And we have another signal here, but we don't need it because we would have applied our executed our buying position right here at this point. And then we have an uptrend on the market. So as you can see, the signals are slightly different from one chart to another because obviously we're not using the same candles. But when we are backtesting, these are the values of the prices that we are going to use. We're not going to backtest using the Heiken Ashi chart. Now the challenging part is to choose a stop loss distance. What we are going to do is that whenever we have a signal, the stop loss is going to be, for example, if we have a long signal, it's going to be the lowest point among the previous two candles. If I take an example here, just for the sake of making things visible, uh, if this is a buying signal, our stop loss would be here because this is the lowest price between the current candle and the previous two candles. So this is one way of doing things. You might want to put a fixed distance stop loss or a 
take profit as well, uh, depending on how you see your exit strategy. But this is a very challenging task as well that might change the results drastically. So we have a big effect on how you manage your trades as well. Now, this is the class where we're going to test our strategy. The initial size is 2%. We're trading 2% of our capital. And at the same time, the take profit stop loss ratio is equal to one, meaning wherever we put the stop loss, at the same distance is going to be taken for the take profit. And you might also change this uh, part here. Let's put it to 1.5, for example. So there are two ways we can close our trades. Uh, the first one is by hitting the stop loss and take profit values, of course. But the second one, if we are in a long position, for example, and we encounter a red Heiken Ashi candle, it means that we are starting to slow down the upward movements or the momentum, and in which case we can close the current trade as well. If our trade is short, we will be looking for a green candle, green Heiken Ashi candle, to close our short trade. And to open our trades, if the signal is equal to two and we don't have any other open trades, remember we are allowing one trade at a time in our system. System. We define our stop loss value, our take profit value, again taking into account the take profit stop loss ratio, and we apply our buying position, taking into account the stop loss take profit values and the um, the size of uh, of the trade. The opposite is true. When the signal is equal to one, we're looking for a selling position. We're starting with ten thousand dollars cash as a backtest, and the margin is one over fifty, or the leverage one to point. 50. No commissions for the moment. We are able to compare this strategy with previous strategies. We can run all of this to backtest it on 10 years daily time frame. And very important thing here is that for the opening and closing price uh, for the backtest, we're using the normal data frame, the normal candlesticks. We're not using the Heiken Ashi candles. So we're simply taking the signal from the Heiken Ashi uh, chart, but then for the backtest, we are using normal candlesticks. So these are the results. We don't have any impressive uh, returns. So we have only 50% of returns with the current parameters. Remember that this was not optimized. You can always play on the moving averages, the uh, length of the moving averages. You can add any conditions you would like, for example, using the RSI or any other indicators. This was just to show you how to incorporate the Heiken and Ashi candles into your strategy using Python and how to backtest things. And this is all I had to show you for this one. I hope you guys liked it. If so, please support by liking and subscribing for more of these videos. Don't hesitate. If you have any ideas or propositions regarding the improvements of this particular system, just drop a comment. Until our next one, trade safe and see you next time.